Hello, Schmoville. Well, this is a pretty historical episode. Um, not necessarily for what is being talked about, although there are a lot of cool uh, things that Catherine, myself, and Ellis talk about during this show. But this was the first show that we ever put on YouTube, meaning you could see us. It was a live streaming. We tried it with YouTube's live stream. The video quality is not good at all, but um, it's fun to see Mark, myself, and Catherine, especially if you just discovered this show. Now you get to see us for the first time kind of going back and forth with each other. And it was pretty simple. It was from my apartment at the time. We just set up uh, the mics on a table and just shot the ship for like an hour. And we did it a couple, I think for the next three or four shows, you'll have the Google or the YouTube stream at the time, you'll see this. So uh, I think it was at the time we were with Machinima and they had an option to do this live streaming thing. So we tried it out. And I think this is kind of what led to us really wanting to be on, the, get the video out there more also because we enjoyed interacting with the fans. We did it a lot. I think we wrote a bunch of questions and stuff over on it. So this is a really cool one in the history of the podcast, and I actually kind of forgot about this episode on how instrumental it was to the growth of the show. So check this out, comment, let us know what you think, and um, if your friends don't know about the Schmoes No podcast, please tell them about it. You can show them Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, but if you want need to show them current episodes, Phase 5, every Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. on schmoesno.com. You can check out, there's a playlist on the main channel. You can find Phase 5 there. So thanks a lot, guys, and enjoy this episode of the Schmoes No podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to the Schmoes No podcast. It's me, Christian Harloff. And uh, I'm Mark Ellis. You are Mark Ellis. Yeah, and uh, the congratulations are in order for you, buddy. For what I do? The first time since the podcast, uh, the New York Giants All right. won the Super Bowl. It's been a really cool couple weeks for the Schmoes. The Giants won the Super Bowl. Van Halen released a new album. Oh, my and, God. And um, Catherine Earthquake. Reitman. There's a lot of cool stuff happening in your world as well. You guys, I, am, I don't know what to do with myself. Well, let's first say hello. Welcome back. Oh, hello. That's right. Introductions. Unbelievable. I, I said Catherine Reitman. It I was so what... nonchalant. Just like, yeah, hey, Catherine Reitman. Kind of no big deal. Sorry, I forgot the rose petals today, this ma'am. This is the star Honestly. of not only Where breaking... Where is my champagne? Sorry. <laughs> This is the star of breaking it down, not uh -huh. only breaking it down. Yeah. Guys, she just got a show on VH1, her own show. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. How right. cool is that? I'm when, very excited. And they changed the name for you, right? Um, it's actually back to, it's called oh. Miss You Much. Miss You Much, okay. Uh, it's going to start airing in the springtime. It's been picked up, which is pretty That's so cool. effing excited. Cool. And so you guys you guys shot the pilot. And shot then the pilot. everybody at VH1 watched it. They're like, you know what, despite the host, I think this thing's going to go. Exactly. So it got picked up. And now that means what? They ordered how many episodes? I heard eight, but cool. that's not confirmed. Which so is it good. could be two. They could take one look at what I actually do, and they're like, uh, make that two. Will by two, I mean none. Will Harry be joining you? Harry will not be on it, uh, much to his dismay. He now thinks he's an actor, by the way. He's very arrogant. Right. Well, let's and, talk about that. Yes. Um, guys, you, you want to see a great episode of Catherine's latest show, and you should check out um, her latest episode of Breaking It Down with Jeremy Johns. It was a great cameo. Yeah, it's BID 51. Uh, really good. And him and Jeremy, uh, excuse me, uh, Harry and Jeremy get into it at the end, and it's, it's an epic battle between good and evil. Well, and it was perfect because Jeremy, you know, everyone always says I'm the female Jeremy Johns, which I actually kind of disagree with. Like, I adore Jeremy. Yeah. He's pure energy. I love his show. You don't dress that nice. No way. No. Loose jeans and an ill-fitted <laughs> jacket. What do I look like, an animal? <laughs> no, I adore Jeremy. I think he's couldn't, couldn't be cooler. But right. I think we definitely have different styles. Mm -hmm. We review differently. We just both are fast and have a lot of energy and we're, you know, use a lot of cutting. But when we watch a show, we always laugh about how many takes there. It's like jump cut, jump cut, jump mm -hmm. cut. So we're like, we have to kill Harry with a jump cut death. Uh, what is a jump cut death exactly? Oh, you got to watch it. You, you, I don't want to ruin it for you. It's, uh, Mark, really? I don't know why you don't watch my show. Okay, you gotta, he doesn't, don't take offense. He doesn't watch anybody's show. I have him in the queue, and it's just weird to hear a jump cut death because, as you know, what Christian and I do, we're pretty much one-take ponies. We turn on the camera. You don't have we to jump cut when it's done. this good. Well, this when what, it's this good, right. you don't cut. By the way, that was a very Jeremy Johnism. When it's this good. So. I'm turning into him. I'm slowly morphing. 
looking into him. I have um, a gray spot developing in the back of my hair. Well, you just answered some questions. Someone asked me that on the. Uh, I did a live stream yesterday, and they asked. He said, "Does Jeremy Johns have that John Henson thing?" And I was like, "I'm not." He totes it, does. It's a special touch from God. Um, all right, guys. So this is what the hell are we doing today on today's podcast? There's going to be a bunch of stuff that we should talk about. A lot of news that I mean, I kind of covered on my. On, we do a new segment now on Friday, mm-hmm. but I think it. You be do. Lo- you should take. You should take credit. You're the star of the show. Well, it's only it's because cool. movie news. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. But um, the thing is, I think that I would like to talk about some of those stories more in depth with you guys, uh-huh. and to also let's kind of, get into it. Yeah, and some more stuff that we should talk about because you know. I know that the people who are, we're actually live streaming this also right now, which is really cool. And um, one of the things that I know a lot of people want to talk about or have us talk about is the Avengers that's coming out. Madonna's um, halftime show, probably. We should definitely talk about probably. Uh, that. That was like watching an, uh, like Christopher Lloyd dance around on stage. <laughs> No, Come on. She no. Looks so I awful. think a lot of people had their oh Madonna looks old jokes ready in the chamber two weeks before the Super Bowl. I thought she looked great. I thought it was a great halftime. I mean, she show. looked good for an eighty year old. Yeah, she looked good. Come oh, on, fight man. your Come awful on. tongue. Listen, I apologize. listen. Are, is all of her new music good? No, but she she was in huge crazy heel boots. Anyone who wears those shoes knows me. Me speaking personally from experience, <laughs> you can't. F and dance around to that. You should, no wonder she could barely walk. I was worried for the whole time. I, I really hate watching live performances like that because I always feel I, like I can't. I can't watch Cirque du Soleil because I'd be so nervous somebody would would, would mess up. You, did you see the guy on the rope? The guy who was like yes. dancing on the rope. Yes. I want to know, like, out of twenty oh, right. times, right. how many times does that guy nail that, and how many times now does he, he probably does he doesn't fall? fall too many times. Do you think that's what the fans Dude, are looking at he, right he, now? He pulled it off brilliantly. That's what I'm saying what, when the Super Bowl but audience was on, he I, he, you he, think he goes twenty? I think 20. he goes home. I think he shops, and while he's yeah. shopping at the supermarket, he sets up a wire, and that's how good. Really? He is. It's like yeah, Man like, on a Wire. Do you guys see that movie? No, I want the documentary. It's and the guy nails it every time. Every time, you know, a lot like Wes Welker until Wes Welker dropped that one that he really needed to have. Right. But anyway. A football that, reference. Yeah. So we just basically Cute. talked. <laughs> we just basically talked about um, the halftime show. So that's over. So we're going to talk movie stuff. Um, you know, like I said, there's some there's something that I wanted to talk about that I'm curious. I know how you feel about it, but I really want to know how you feel about it. And that's I can't imagine that you enjoy the Expendables. I'm talking to Catherine. I can't imagine. Did you enjoy the Expendables? You know, I didn't see it. Okay, were you an action fan as a kid? No. Okay, so I think women can enjoy the Expendables. I think it's it's fun. I, I don't think that it's that polar opposite. Like what Sex in the City is the guys. I don't think that that's the Expendables for women. I think you can have a lot of fun watching that movie uh, if you're anybody. I, I just think that it, it's it's one of those things that when you're a kid. I was a big Arnold Schwarzenegger fan and Stallone fan. I was a big I, Van Damme guy. Right. Yeah. So like when you grow up with all the guys, so when they come back, and I referenced it in the show yesterday, I said it was kind of like when when Hulk Hogan and um, Ric Flair got yeah. together. Like it was thirty years too late, but it's still cool to see it. Mm-hmm. And that's what The Expendables is. If you're not a fan, you of know what's really difficult for me, Christian and Mark. Wrestling references. Uh, yes. Those yes. are difficult for me too. I'm I'm on that train with you. It's yeah, it's gross. <laughs> um, no, I, I think it's difficult for me. I grew up watching so many quality films with like really good plot and really oh, good acting. Mm-hmm. And so to see action films with men who just basically are designed just to look good and the plot's lacking, and the, especially action sequences have gotten, action movies have gotten pretty damn good. There's some, Is yeah, The Expendables think, up to that are caliber? Are you saying that they've no. gotten better than Steven Seagal's Prime with such films as <laughs> Hard to Kill and Mart for Death? Let me, I want to make know it what clear, either though. Of those are. You really? You don't oh, know what Mark for Death is? Treat yourself. You don't know what Mark for Death is? You need to be punished. Out for justice? I, um, I do not need to be punished. Yes, you do. By Steven Seagal with his ponies. You should see Under Siege. whip you with his ponies. Under Siege holds up. Under Siege, I've seen. I'm I mean, a, I'm it, a, as, human. as guys, we love those movies because we love the stars. And whatever they were doing in the early 90s, we kind of were on board with it. But then there, there were some genuinely good movies that right, came out yeah. of that. Like Under Siege yeah, got sure. really lucky. Well, and do, uh, Hard I, Target I, for Van Damme or Time Cop is pretty good. I'm so good. glad I'm here today. Time, today. Time but, Cop's really. a better movie. <laughs> than. But, Catherine's right, though. There are, the action is a little different if you look at something Katie like Katie just yawned for the record. <laughs> this conversation That's is not the worst. last time she's going to yawn. I had a point for this, okay? So anyway. You have a news show where you get to make your points, all right? These rated R, these rated R films, these hard rated R action films. Now, yeah. stupid ass Chuck Norris. Okay, now it became like a huge god. You know, with everyone making these jokes about him, how he was the original yeah. Tiger Blood yeah. guy and all that shit. Um, now he came out basically and said that he wouldn't have done Expendables two if they didn't make it PG thirteen because he's like some you know I guess he's some radical religious dude. Yeah, the guy's broken a thousand X on camera. Now he's like, you know what? I think I don't want to be as violent anymore. Yeah, but, but that's my th- that's my question to you, Catherine. Do you think you can do a rated R movie for your first movie and then jump to PG thirteen because a this 
douche star wants okay, to do Okay, but it. everybody says that Chuck Norris is like I leading that bandwagon. I believe the question was to Catherine. But I want to set this up because because everybody's killing Chuck Norris, but he said he wouldn't have done the movie if it, it was... Was he the one in the room that said, hey, we're not making this movie unless it's PG-13? Yes. Yeah, he's yes. a star man. He, what, said he, was, he said he would not be involved if they if it was not PG-13. So they had everybody else and it was rated R and then Chuck Norris comes on board and they're like, oh, we got to make it PG-13 for Chuck. Yeah, he's like, I'll I do think the stars m- have that kind of power. I also think when stars become older and they have families, does Chuck Norris have a family? Uh, maybe. He's got great grandkids. But, yeah, yeah. The guy's yeah. a family, right? I think you get kids, and you always hear about stars saying, I want to make more movies that my kids can watch. Yeah. I think, you know, he wants to, when you're yeah. younger and edgier, you, you know, you're, he's, a, he's an aging man. Right, but the thing is, this is not like his movie. They were already set up. Like, the first movie was rated R. You know, it was the whole thing was R. You had, uh, you know... Uh, Rand- so what do you lose when you when you go from R to 13 in an action I don't think well, you lose as much as what Christian is worried about, you, but you can still, because they're still really creative. If, if you get a little creative with it, which wasn't the high point of the Expendables first movie. Were there breasts? A little creative in the original? No, uh, no. There might have been. Was there effing in it? No, but that's the, that's the thing. You take that, out some F words. I, I see don't where you're going. Boobs. I see where you're going because MPAA will give you a no pun intended hard R. Um, Yum. If, if you know if, if there's a lot of cursing and there's a lot of sex, they're a little more lenient on violence. Yeah. And that's why I'm not worried about Hunger Games. But Ugh. but when you have the Expendables to where you need those like Rambo, you're not getting away with that kind of violence and getting a PG-13. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? That's the kind of violence I wanted to Rambo's see. Rambo's like NC-17 violence. That's right. Funny. But anyway, I, I, that's, I just wanted to go and see if you guys had a couple examples because I had one that a movie that was R for the first one and then one of the next sequels you know, were PG-13 and well, it worked or didn't work. My example was Major League. Major League was, was rated R and was great because of it and then PG-13, they watered it down to get the audience and they killed the movie. Right. I got Whenever uh, you're adjusting your film... Uh, to get a larger audience as opposed to yeah. just being true to the story and being true to what it's about, I think you're going you're gonna to sacrifice the well, quality. The real problem when, when you start out rated R and then the next one's PG-13 is that now everybody knows what you're trying to do. Right. Like with The Hunger Games, right. you, you start out PG-13 exactly. and a lot of that audience is too young to see an R movie. I think the best example is Die Hard because Die Hard was rated R. Die yeah. Hard 2 was rated R. Yeah. Die Hard with a Vengeance was rated R. Right. And Live Free or Die Hard was PG-13. So yeah. it's like, wait, what's going on you, here? You can't However, do that. you watch that movie though, and and the violence is the exact same. I didn't I didn't see a drop off in action at all. However, is- however, at the end of the movie, the yippee ki isn't quite as right, clear. That, that's language, yeah. But in the and then in the unedited cut, they show it. But you don't think the violence in Die Hard One is different from the violence. You don't think it's There's watered down? It's Michael there. Bay violence in the fourth one. Is a pair of th- yeah, it's it, is, more, it is raw in the first one, man. Yeah. Like, t- people getting thrown down. I think that's, more of a sign, that's as much of a sign of the times in 88 versus 2000. You know, yeah, no, I mean, was. maybe. But, I don't know. But anyway, so that's... Fascinating. That, do you have... <laughs> All right. This is all so fascinating. All right, special. All right, let's so, talk about child stars. So that we're, we're, we're learning where child stars are now Don't be offensive in Vegas. to my show. <laughs> all right, so girl with puppy, let me ask you this question. Offensive. Um, all right. Um, so we had some trailers that came out this week. And talk to me about now, them. Now, significantly... Like, significantly? No, traditionally, mm. you don't really you don't review trailers on your show, right? I don't. No, I okay. actually, and I'd like to take a moment to say it because I get yeah. a lot of, especially now that I have all of Jeremy, a lot of Jeremy's fans have been commenting, uh, particularly mm. on this episode about you know I only do one episode a week and I don't review video games, I don't review trailers. You don't wear the slave play outfit every week. I don't no, wear the slave play outfit every that. week. How <laughs> offensive! But I, it's. I also don't review every movie that comes out like you guys. Mm-hmm. I don't review. I didn't review Journey Two. I didn't review The Chipmunks. I don't review a lot of movies I don't want to watch. Lucky you. The difference between. I mean, breaking it down really is designed not because I'm a movie review show that does every every movie that comes out. Right. I just do things that I want to do. Yeah, right. that's the truth of it, you know. And I, I don't see a lot we, of movies. We I don't see a lot of trailers. Slave ourselves to the nonsense, and they love you for I it. Know. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Um, Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I think that if you if, if, did, you see any trailers this week because the Super Bowl is a big. Tell it, me your favorite trailer. Well, the reason why the Super Bowl is really exciting for nerds who don't like football. I shouldn't say nerds, but for people who don't watch football, is because you get the commercials, and in particular, you get a lot of cool movie promos that you wouldn't get otherwise. That's why the right. Avengers, like even Christian and I are huge football fans. When the Avengers promo came on, we're like, Stop. oh, we should okay. Now, what did you think of the Avengers trailer? I did see that. Um, for me, I, I thought it was. Actually, I thought it looked awesome. It looked really Sorry, cool. Yeah. No, I thought it looked really cool because, um, look, I'm like I've talked about Joss Whedon before. Like, I think he's a hardcore fan of mm-hmm. this of this franchise. You so know? you worry about the Sam Raimi effect taking no, over I too don't, much? No, because I don't think he's going to go as because Sam Raimi can get really corny with yeah. stuff, like and go more on the joke. Is where I think that Joss Whedon's going to be faithful to what's there, and it seemed that one shot. 
of the, when they were all standing together and it's that it, 360 yeah, panorama the 360. of yeah, all them getting ready the only one that bothered evil. me in that shot was Scarlett Johansson Scarlett Joe she looks what ridiculous what the hell is she doing yeah, in there kind of like, the whole thing and I'm not a geek girl I didn't you know I don't follow all the comics and everything but I, I just all, I felt like I was watching an advertisement I didn't feel like I was watching a story. I felt like I was watching, like, this was designed for your money. Right. You know, like, I wasn't like, oh, shit. Like, when I see the Hunger Games trailer, and I read all the books, I'm far more committed to that. I got, like, my heart palpitations. Right. Well, there's more, a little yeah. more. It seems like there's a little more, and, and we, you know what's going to happen. Just for everyone at home, I'm seeing five Star Wars books in his bookshelf <laughs> right off the bat. Continue. They're gifts. They're gifts. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you gifts. Know, games right there. You too. know what's weird is that you, you, I bet you rarely see that in a bookcase. There's, there's seven Star Wars books. There's 300 games books. And then there's also It's a Girl Cigars. And That's it's right. like, you just rarely right. yeah. see those two things together. Like, yep. There's also a, a, a Dewey cat book. So let's not talk about everything on that shelf. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, as re- in regards to like Hunger Games, to where you also know the story right. as far as you know where it gets, goes I'm emotionally. Yeah. I'm more committed. Well, if you read the book. That's either. why I think I see the Avengers and I just see. But there was something to say about we're taking every star from every comic and every film and putting them all in one. Look at them standing in a circle, yeah, well, also, ready to kick ass. But that does show that was that, also what the comic book was, though, is yes. that you had all these individual ones and then everybody, you know, who, everybody at Marvel was like, hey, why don't we put everybody together so it's kind of a, you know, let, let's shoot for the moon thing when the, when the comic book storylines came out, when, they, right. when the Avengers first came out. A long out, time ago, right. Together, so yeah. and, that, and that was the thing I think Marvel did brilliantly was the fact that they've been setting up this movie forever. The fact that they pulled it off this far yeah. impresses the hell out of me. Going back to Iron Man when it was a surprise hit and then the fact that you could the reboot little, the Hulk franchise right. and the fact that you could get Thor and it was good and the fact that Captain America was good. Last summer when you're watching Thor and Captain America you just hoped they weren't awful so that you could enjoy the event. And they weren't. And, and the and Captain really America good. needed to be um, that movie that really gets you into the it into put, the, it put the it put the pregame show yeah. it put a nice little bow on the pregame show and now it's time to really play the game now Scarlett Joe she's just the character from Iron Man yes yes Iron so, Man too her character is Black Widow and I I did I did a review of the the trailer on Schmoes and and somebody made a good point because I said that she was the one that looked a little out of place I still think she's going to be fine but she did she looked the most nervous of any of them yeah. and somebody wrote they made a good point they said that uh, that, that she should be nervous because she's not like a superhero like all these other ones she's just like a, a a badass assassin ninja or whatever she is so she can look a little nervous she during the apocalypse special powers. yeah my point is that th- then why are you there then why are you hanging out with these people if you're just a badass spy then then why because they oh, need a little tna well, that's got to be that's, it. well that's part of it but you also got to remember that hawkeye and uh, who's played by jeremy renner and naturally and scarlett johansson black widow are i think the only ones who don't have superpowers oh jeremy renner doesn't have superpowers i don't either. believe so if you're what does hawkeye, hawkeye do he sees a lot of stuff and shoots people with he arrows. With arrows? Yeah. She, I love how she, you see this like condescending thing she's doing. No, that you stop no, it. I'm she's learning. Like, and I'm so learning. Tell me about your comic book, little boy. Someone is sensitive. I am very sensitive. You're having your elementary oh, school you. anxiety come watch, out right now. Watch this. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Welcome back to couples therapy here on Schmoes. <laughs> <most now. laughs> okay, um, so Scarlett Joe is yeah. just a ninja. Jeremy Renner can shoot arrows and he's got really good vision because he's a Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. And then there's Captain America. Yes. There's Thor. Yes. Who else? Uh, we got Iron Man in there. We got the Hulk, right? Yeah, Iron uh, Man, those of four: Captain America, mm-hmm. the Hulk, uh, Iron Who's Man. Who's the Hulk? Uh, it, well, it, it, this is number three. This is our third There's Hulk. There's been so many. We, yes. had, we had Eric Bana. We had Eric. That yes. didn't work out. We had Edward Norton, and that really worked out for everyone except Edward Norton. Right. Well, yeah, because apparently he had a lot of beef with uh, with Marvel, and yeah. uh, Marvel didn't like. Th- thought he was a pain in the ass, and then it was just back and forth, and then they got Ruffalo, and Ruffalo kind of. I, I, Rumor is that he called Edward Norton. Edward Norton gave him his blessing and said, do it. Um, and so it's Ruffalo now? Yes, yeah, Mark <gasps> Ruffalo. How would that phone call go? Hey, I'm going to play the Hulk, and uh, it, you're going to have to be cool with it. And Edward Norton was like, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, more or less. But I'll tell you, though, that he, I think he's going to be good. Yeah. And may, what I'm hoping that they do from this is that if we can make um, both Jeremy Renner and this Hulk cool, yeah. we can get their spinoff movies. I don't give a shit about the, the Black Widow no, we we don't Maybe. want to go down that Catwoman no. route again. But uh, you know, well, hold on, she's not Catwoman. She looks kind of badass. She does a lot but, more ass kicking than Halle Berry does. I think she looks cooler than, than Anne Hathaway does in, in Dark Knight oh, right now. Catwoman. I'll tell you that. Right, right, right. I think she looks great. I, I, I have think no Scarlett Johansson about how Scarlett yeah. Johansson looks. Yeah. No, you're not going to hear that. I agree. Why? Right. I thought she looked great, and we bought it. Yeah, but a she zoo. looks like she could kick some ass. Did she do? Some, she did some ass kicking in Iron Man. She, she kicks some ass. Too, but you yeah. have you have evil coming from different planets in the Avengers. It's not her and ass I'm kicking. Just, I'm just saying I wouldn't. She wouldn't be my fifth round. You're just pick not interested in put. her character. It's, it's it's the faces she makes. She looks like she's so. She's posing for Marie Claire. 
Yeah, she's just That's so a magazine, guys. <laughs> she's so out of place. It's like when they're, when they're all staring, like exactly when they're all staring and looking, and everyone's looking at the bad guys. She's looking at like a, a window display she's of the latest dress. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like what's going? <laughs> pay attention. There's there's aliens coming after us. <laughs> Right. We sound like two old men in the forties. Well, these these broads, we we let them vote, <laughs> and then the next thing you know, they're window shopping during the war. You hit her in the face with a pot roast and get done with it. <laughs> Girls can't uh, play baseball. I have to go. No, I apologize. Okay, so that's that was that. Then we're gonna go a little more into geekiness because thank God. Now there's a rumor. Leave a trail of breadcrumbs, Catherine. Yes. We don't know if we can get you out of this. <laughs> there was a, thank you. There was a rumor that um, the Amazing Spider-Man was supposed to show up in a cameo. In um in the event, I saw a bunch of people writing that, but uh, commenting. But I just thought it was it was a uh, 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 whimsy. I don't think will. it's going to happen because apparently here's what happened: some <laughs> woman who was who was an extra or or had a small part on the in the Avengers film said that she tweeted or I don't know some shit to where she said basically the Amazing Spider Man made a cameo. I mean, we had his scenes that Garfield was there, blah blah blah, and then the, the internet went nuts, which here's- is so against the rules if you're an extra. I know a lot of people have done it. I've never done extra work myself, but I know a lot of people have done it. And like, you're not allowed to do anything on that set. You sit there right. and you're sheep. Yeah, they shut and you, it down. You, you don't look at don't anybody. Know. She may not have been extra. She may have been like someone with a bit part. I think she was someone with a bit she part. She ain't eating a good craft services table. No, she's never going to have the prime an rib with she, Downey. She, back to her job at, you know, uh, yeah. sex if that. But so she uh, tweeted that, that Spider-Man shot a scenes today? Yes. Something along those lines. So the internet went nuts that she, you know, but what a lot of people think is maybe she just was this like someone like Catherine to where she didn't know much about the franchise. Franchise yeah. and was just like, oh, that was Spider Man and it was the Hulk. You know, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> is that uh, the one with the purple pants? Right. Which is the exactly? So how stupid she must be! Unbelievable! I don't know how she leaves the house. That dummy. <laughs> she just got a show on BH1. Um, but look, we're so, so happy for you. But uh, of course we are. Uh, we really now, are. The That's thing awesome. is with that, uh, you know, with the VH. VH1. See? I'm See? All, it's amazing I'm how I infest. Yeah, I know. You get no. right in the brain. You're the becoming thing Jeremy is with Spider-Man. We're becoming your slaves. <laughs> hey! Uh, now, the reason I bring up Spider-Man also, I don't think that that's going to happen because of this. And this is that Marvel mm-hmm. um, now owns a lot of their properties again. They had they, A lot of the studios d- took over. Like Sony ha- owns Spider-Man. Yeah. Fox owns X-Men. But Marvel owns the rest of them. So we don't know if uh, Spider-Man can even legally do that unless they came to some agreement. I, I have a feeling they shot something, but right. but, but just because you shot something... No, you something, should come back. You should no, talk no, about this. Just because you something. just because you shot something with Spider-Man doesn't mean you have to use it. Uh-huh. You know, it can, be, it can be bonus footage or it can be something that you can think about later, but it doesn't mean that he's going to be in... Even if they the, shot the scene. Uh, come here, you. Yeah, there's a question there for you. Uh, oh, what is it? The, the question is, legally, would you want, if you were a studio... Would you want um, to, like, let's say you have this franchise that's coming out of Spider-Man, right? Yes. Now, do you want to put him, even if the, you, you, the Marvel owns the rights, you own this character, do you want to put them in Marvel's movies so you get the extra exposure for when your movie comes out, um, you know, a month or whatever it is? Because uh, Avengers comes out in May, right? Yeah. So I'd say, I'd say no. You say no, put him in. So that's why it, I'm asking. Wait, why? Legally. It, you ran away. It ain't it, it ain't like it's some unknown superhero. It's not like it's Blank Man who has his own movie coming out. This is Spider. We know who Spider Man is. He doesn't mm-hmm. need to do press. Okay, it's like if he wants to sell a weekend, he doesn't need to do radio that morning. He's Spider Man. It's We're also gonna see such an movie. overexposed. Like I mean, Arnold. I mean, ex- forgive me because I'm sure you guys have already talked this to death. But what? Like, why are we making other Spider Man? Didn't I just watch Spider Man? Well, that's I think a good, that's, that's, that's I, a I think question. I think that's a that's very a valid question. point. And I, you know, I, I'm, I was kind of on that bandwagon, especially with the Hulk, where it's like, okay, how many times are we going to do this? We're going to get to the point where there's going to be two competing Spider Man movies out at the multiplex the same weekend. Well, especially for those of us who aren't like don't follow all the comic book stuff. Mm-hmm. Like when I see, I remember watching the Hulk, and I was like, is it Eric Banner? What the f is going on here? Yeah. Like, I just right. feel like they're completely draining my wallet. They're I thought it was. I thought that there was a, there was like a 15 year window that you at least had to wait because you had Batman come out and then they ran that into the ground. But then all of a sudden they rebooted Batman with Batman Begins like six years after uh, Batman and Robin came out. And it was such a breath of fresh air. So it's kind of nice to be able to have that license where, well, hey. They can make Batman uh, for the rest of my life. I'm very happy with that franchise. But why different? So you, were you okay with the last Spider-Man, Spider-Man 3? Do you remember it? With uh, yeah, yeah, Tobey yeah. Maguire singing, dancing, going all emo? Like, you have to reboot oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have yeah. to reboot it. I just hate the fact that Venom. I just feel like there's so many. Please, the, well, talk, they, talk about they, Venom. They just wasted <laughs> Venom. They wasted Venom. <laughs> 
in Spider-Man 3. I know what you mean. All right, Catherine. No, right. I'm, I'm just no, saying you know there are what? so many original stories out there that have not been told yet. All we do Sophia is Sophia Coppola, ladies and, and gentlemen. Remakes. Sophia Coppola. Yeah. If my fan's watching, you know how I feel about Sophia Coppola. Like, there's like just so Sophia many great Coppola. stories out there. Yeah. Okay, well, what do you want why to see we, get why made? We, but Andrew Garfield needs work that bad? Listen. Emma Stone hasn't no, had a busy no, enough year? No, <laughs> listen to me. Did you hear, did you see the trailer for the new Spider-Man? Uh, the latest one? No. How dare you then? I, get, I would love to get your opinion on that because it is, I think, the tone that Mark Webb is going for. Mm-hmm. His name's Mark Webb. Which is great. You can make a joke about that if you want. You know, to include Spider. Your, sure. There you, there you go. No. Okay. There you go. So I'm a little more complex than that, Mark. Look, the, <laughs> it's, it's dark. It looks like a, it's, it's a more serious tone. I think that I, it looks like an actual movie and not just popcorn fluff. I can't wait to see it. You're lying through your teeth. I'm not lying through my teeth. I'm going to see it. Right. I'm a big fan of Andrew Let, Garfield now, and Emma Stone. Go, now, are we going to go see Ghost Rider next week? Now, do you want to? That see, I will not be sick. Now, do you want to see Catherine get happy? We're going to move away from superheroes. Hey, yeah. Okay. Now, right, now I'm leaving. All right. No, you're not, because we're going to talk about uh, the Born Legacy. No. Why? What's no, wrong with that? Please, really? Let's talk. You don't like anything cool? What do you want to talk about? The vow? Yes. Yeah. Finally, we got to the we got to the facts. I don't like anything cool. Yeah, okay. The only wait, thing wait. I Catherine like made is a the point. vow. <laughs> Catherine made a point earlier. She said, why do you have to keep redoing these same stories? Why can't you tell an original story? Right. Yes. What's an original story? Yes, please. Let's, let us... Well, what's we'll, a, what's we'll, a movie we'll, that's coming out in 2012 that's an original story that you want to talk about? Besides Hunger Games. Hunger Games is an incredibly original story. Yeah, we talked about it to death. All right? I can't, I'm just saying I can't wait. I'm not saying we have to talk about that. Then what's another one? What's, what's an original... You guys want me to pick the topic? Of course. Yeah. You guys feel really anxious about bringing up your topics, and you want me to talk about? Well, it seems that like if we, we came this, prepared this, with topics, and apparently wait, only no, two this, people this, want to talk this about. Is, this is an example. All right, so we're going to talk about um, the fact that Arnold. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, how about the latest you, superhero. I'm, mm. I'm not stopping. You guys are talking about it. I just don't have that much to give into a car. I don't know that much about it. You can, but you know actors and stuff that's going on. All right. Tell me about the board. Speaking. Talk to me about no, Bourne. No, no, no. We're past Christian, Bourne. here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to talk about Bourne, and Kevin's going to participate, because if she doesn't, we're going to have a debate about the prequels. On Star Wars? Yeah. She's going to jump out the window. Are you yeah. kidding me? I, I will leave. Yeah, yeah. She'll I leave. Will leave. So you can either have that. You can either have us debate the merits of Jar Jar Or I can Banks leave. Or <laughs> Watto. Yeah. All right, let's, well, let's, I might leave. All right. There, actually, there's... So... Well, what we're going to do also, we have a second podcast that's going to be coming out next week. We're going to do, we're going to talk about the Oscars. And I know that, that Catherine is going that to be excited me. about oh, that. Oh, good. We can finally talk about dresses. Yeah. He's like, well, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to all talk about and, and get into the depth. But I would like to talk about Born for a second, if you please. I would like to say one thing before we move on. Okay. And that is for the ladies watching, mm-hmm. because I don't want Hi, to girls. talk about geeks, doesn't mean all I want to talk about is the vow and dresses at the Oscars. We are not. <laughs> it kind of seems that. That's way. stereotypical. No, you, by the way, it's not. It all seems that. Well, way. superhero. The Bourne isn't a superhero. It's just. A, it's a secret agent movie. It's like you absolutely. Know. I, I said I'm down to talk about Bourne. I'm not. It's not a movie you franchise. Made a I'm face. crazy about. You made a face. I'm not crazy about it. I'm not that familiar. When with When we brought it. up oh. Bourne, your face literally went down, and then I assume you made one. I couldn't see it because it was so I, down. I will control my face. <laughs> Keep going. No, no, do uh, you like? Do you like the original Bourne movies? Yes, I do. Okay, so what I just don't remember them very well. Like it's not something that's on the tip well, neither, of my tongue. Neither did he. <laughs> that was the whole premise of the movie. That's right. He didn't remember that's shit. Right. So well, he... it's not the first time I've been compared to Jason Bourne. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, well, she's, that... she's looking though. She might break my neck. So well, she, there... maybe she has that talent. I know. Well, it's it's good to have her feisty this early. In the is morning. that weird that, that one of my dreams? That like that's how far. But that's where my life is now. Where I kind of wish that one day I'll just snap and I'll remember that I have all these secret agent powers. By the way, I'm not totally everybody. unconvinced that that's true for you. <laughs> I, Can't you see Mark Ellis all of a sudden waking up and being like, Wah! Here's why I'd be a good secret agent. It'd because it's like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, where Gary Oldman, none of those guys looked like spies, and that's why they were great at it. I don't look like a dude who'd be a spy. You know, I mean, of course, I work out, but I don't look like I do, so I think I'd be perfect. I can, I can, I can blend into any situation. You'd be an awesome spy until you had to talk to a lot of people. If, no, I could talk to the dudes. The girls, I'd be you nervous about. You'd go to a bar about. and yeah. you'd be in the corner doing so... <laughs> you'd be no investigation. Right. After how many drinks? He's, he's going to talk to... He'd be like, stay on target. Stop talking about the latest Van Halen album. <laughs> Cut it out. Stay on would target. would be a spy that knew nothing I would but be, Van Halen. I would be a great James Bond. You guys have seen me in a tux recently. I'd pull up to the party and I'd be like, all right, let's play some poker. And then I'd just keep throwing back Pap's blue ribbons instead of martinis. Right. And uh, it wouldn't be good. No. Um, okay. Well, let's see... J- I'm, I'm, we're just we're th- we're, this is another story. I have a funny feeling this is going to be like throwing poop against the wall too. But Catherine, how do you feel about Blade Runner? 
<laughs> now, I, I can kind of side with Catherine on this because I have not seen the, the original? original Blade Runner. I saw one of them by accident. I went to it thinking it one was going to be one. like a... Okay, there was only one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I went to it in the theaters, I think in Hawaii of all places. Okay. I think my, like, my dad was shooting and I was bored and I went to the movies and I thought it was, was going to be an action movie. And Blade Runner is the vampire Wait, movie. No, no, no. Yeah, I was going to say, you couldn't have seen that anything. You were, I don't even think you were born. I think really she saw out. Blade. Oh, no, no. Blade, Blade Runner. I've broken down Blade Runner. Blade Runner, I totally know. Okay, cool, Yes, cool. yes, okay, yes. Okay, good. And did you enjoy it? And I thought it was badass. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. So Why we can talk you about go, this, You were bored in Hawaii, so, so you, you went to Blade? the movies? I was there for six months. It's, it's a long story. That's I was cool. The, I could go to the movies. Arloff and I both went there for a week separately to Hawaii, and we're ready to go back. Wait, what's the one with Blade? Blade, Wesley Snipes. Yes, yes, okay. no, 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 no. Blade. Blade talk, no. is a vampire <laughs> that doesn't pay. Not sure why I do the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so no. knowledgeable on movies. Uh, <laughs> what? But the vow. Let's but talk the, about the vow. Oh, well, the all vows right. and dresses and bras and tampons. <laughs> I could talk about all day. Want some chocolate? All right. So um, let's talk. Blade Runner. You do enjoy. I loved Blade Runner. Great. And Ridley Scott, we all agree, is a fantastic filmmaker. A lot of smoke, a mm-hmm. lot of noise. He likes to fill that camera. That's right. Now, <laughs> we know that he's doing Prometheus, which is the... Cool. Maybe the prequel to Alien. Cool. Maybe. Have you seen the trailer for that? Yeah. No, it's that sounds awesome. Maybe. Fassbender. We, well, people don't really Fuss know. Fuss Boner's in it? Yep. Ugh, I'm yeah, in. Yeah, Charlie Theron. Yes, so we don't know. Love Charlize, love Fuss Boner. Right. Okay, so Christian, we, note to self. Next time we talk like nerd movies and stuff, just open with something about Fassbender. Fassbender or Gosling, yeah, yeah, He played true. Magneto. Gradually get right? into it, yeah. That's right. She, Enough insulting. I am no with you. Don't you. lose me. No well, I feel bad because we really hit you over the head with the Avengers. No, that's what we're saying. Welcome to the podcast. The Avengers is coming. That's the stuff, though, Catherine. you got to realize realize with us when you you have to brace yourself that when you see like the trailer for those movies you gotta be like oh shit and prepare yourself for the podcast when got that, it when that well i'm but, very excited for the prequel for, to aliens for prometheus okay so that and that being said with fuss boner yes um that trailer's out it's coming out i think it's, i don't forgive me i don't remember exactly when it's coming out. i think maybe july or august there's a teaser, for, Prome- a there's a teaser for prometheus in uh for prometheus in uh like around christmas and the movie's coming out the later in the summer right but the reason i bring so this up so what's the setup like what is the plot of it well, i have no uh, idea prometheus uh yeah i don't know a lot about it to be honest i think it's like uh, it's when is it the, the spider before it became the maybe, spider i don't again i really have uh i think that they they go they, they, the ship crashes somewhere I mean mm-hmm. it's kind of like every alien movie I guess but yeah. um, ship must again, crash I, want, I have to watch it but the reason I bring up Ridley Scott and that what they wanted to do there was rumors that they were going to do a sequel to um, Blade Runner mm-hmm. they were going to do a kind of the same thing to do with Prometheus a prequel a prequel yeah. a prequel to Blade Runner yes but then and Alcon Entertainment is doing this um, they have the, they have now with yeah. Warner Brothers they're doing so now there was a rumor that came out that Harrison Ford was in talks. Oh boy! To there be, it goes. Well, listen, there it went. I know to be, to reprise his role, which doesn't make sense. First of if all, if it's because, a prequel, it doesn't make a lot of sense. No, 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 no. Because no, with him, it'd have to be a sequel. <laughs> be with him, that, yeah. well, that, but yeah. that, that's yeah. when it started yeah. going around. People yeah. were like, well, wait a minute. Like, if he's in talks and there's going to be a sequel, and how are they going to do that? Because Deckard is. He was maybe an android. We don't know. Unless he just makes a cameo like Leonard Nimoy did in uh, Star Trek. Uh, just totally. Like, be, hey. Totally. Have you seen Harrison Ford ever just make a cameo? No. Guys, but no. again, people get bored. But anyway, but then Alcon said, no, 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 not true. Uh, we don't know exactly if we're going. We, we kind of want to go the route that Ridley Scott's going with Prometheus and this and that. So we don't know. But the thing that scares me in the first place with Alcon doing it is Alcon. You're not a jo- fan of them. They made Joyful Noise. Okay. Oh boy. Really? Oh boy. You, you think anybody that, that you, they made joyful and, noise and, and joyful noise Blindside, made joy- which is fine, but it's not the tone of Blade Runner. No, dude, really? You, you're worried about a studio? Do you think they're gonna put the same? Do you think Studios they're gonna be like, hey, different racing kinds of stripes? Hey guys, this, this is not studio. This is the production. Guys, this company Blade Runner prequel is yeah, great. We just need more. Can make many different kind of things. I agree with you, but their track record. Has been not not good. Se- and it's, you think they're they going to put money. choir scenes in, in Blade Runner? Is that you think Dolly Parton's going to make a cameo I'm in it? I'm just telling you the track, record that, the track record that they have. This is not Brad Bird who does The Expendables and jumps to Mission Impossible 4. This is he didn't studio. do The Expendables. He did The Incredibles also. and he jumped. It was his Look first live action oh, movie. You, so. you are viciously defending Alcon Entertainment. I'm not, I'm not defending him, but if they, they, they made a movie and Joyful Noise made money. So there you go. It made a little bit of money. Okay, Fine. I'm, not, so, I'm not telling you that they don't have to make movies. What I'm yeah. saying is I just... I think it's a reach to compare... To, to think that anybody's going to think that it's like Joyful Noise. And they did the Dolphin Tale. They, their, their movies, I'm not saying the movies... I'm not, even say, I'm not telling you that their movies stink. What I'm telling you is that tone does not seem to be... Who's going to direct it? 
great. The guy who did Joyful Noise. I would assume. If, I think Ridley Scott. And if that's the case, I get more. I, I have a little more confidence because Ridley Scott's the type of person I can vision. go take it's your notes vision. and go away. Listen, yeah. I, I would argue that Blade Runner would be a shit film if it wasn't for Ridley Scott. I really think so. Really? I think he, his vision is what made it so epic. And I think if he's taking care of the second one, we can all, we can all exhale. Yeah, I agree with you. I just, I, I'm just curious to see what they do. The, I think Harrison Ford should stay the yeah. hell away from it and protect I, I, himself and his reputation yeah. and the film. I happen to agree with you, and I know keep his earring in. Go yeah. back and lay down. <laughs> yeah, Christian, I think, I mean, I understand, you know, you, you just work at studios, you know how it goes over there, but I think that when you have a director like a Ridley Scott, uh-huh. then, then you don't worry about the studio. That's, it's like okay. if Nolan said he wanted to do something, then you know the studio, whoever does it, right, they're just we, paying money. Because we know, we know Ridley Scott cares about what he's doing, and he's yeah. going to put right. effort in it. Now, mm-hmm. someone else that also does that, puts a lot of effort into stuff, haven't seen him uh, more than just an actor, yeah. is Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The yes. kid from Third Rock? The kid from Third Rock. Yeah. Um, yep. Now, there was something that came out this week that he is going to be directing his first film. Great. Get um, on there. Yeah, and it's Be going, the next Clooney kid. Yeah, and he's going to be direct he's going to be directing uh, with Scarlett Johansson again. Mm-hmm. Is going to be in Who is very hit or miss pending on the director? I totally agree with you. She's and always I, in the hands of the director, man. And in small movies like this, I think she could be great. She's, she's, she's an adorable, adorable piece of I, clay. I enjoy her. <laughs> yeah, she is. And I enjoyed her and we bought a zoo. I thought she was Ladies are so silly, right, Mark? Scarjo, I'd like you to be my Play-Doh. Um, this is going to be a fist fight soon. I can't wait to see it. Um, but I think, I think Levitt's going to be great. I, I think he's got a good I, eye on him. Yeah. What's the movie? What's the the movie? What's the gag? The, base, the movie. I don't. They don't have the actual name for it yet. But he's set to. He's going to write and star in an untitled comedy, which will also mark his feature directorial debut. Wait, at, he's also writing and starring in it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a lot of jobs. I don't know. He I'm now I'm nervous. Too much to handle. He just lost his objectivity. Uh, he's know. too involved. And he's gonna and he's gonna end up with Scar Jo. Then you know that's to have the triple header. You have got to be a pro. That's not the first one you direct. The first one you direct, you take a couple really talented actors that you can rely on. You put don't them on put an excellent story, and you just direct. You go the Jodie Foster route. Okay. That's right. You get Mel Gibson, you yeah. get a puppet, and you just throw <laughs> yourself into it. Well, yeah, didn't she direct now? She directed Home for the Holidays. <laughs> How dare I? Which, right. which, which, she, which wasn't, she wasn't in it, so right. she just kind of sat behind I the agree. camera. I agree. I think that sometimes you, you have, you, if you put yourself in it, in your first no. thing you're ever doing, that's no. tough. But yeah. I, the reason I think it could work with him is because for me, <laughs> and, I don't, and Catherine, I know also as an actress that you may or may not, I think you might agree with this, the fact that I think that it's always easier for actors to work with an, a director who was an actor because he understands the acting Totally, process. the communication. Right. It, actors, directors are my favorite. And I, you know, just also even auditioning, the auditioning process, mm-hmm. like going in for different directors, you can tell ones who've played with acting before. Right. It's just, a, it's, it's a whole other creature. Yeah. And I think he'll be a phenomenal director. I think he's got a good eye. I think he's a really talented actor. But I think for his first, he should step out. He should step out. He should get some talented actors. Right. I'm just I'm curious. I mean, uh, the thing is, he, I don't, he hadn't had a bad step yet, so you know. Well, that and that transitions. Keep playing. But that transitions me into this yes. next segment that I know Catherine will Shoot actually be moon. very excited for this too. I want to know from everybody on the table. Shoes. Too, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you later. I will see you later. I have to go. Um, I love you. Okay. So I want to talk about the actors that are out there today. Um, okay. Like, and it doesn't. They don't have to be. It doesn't have to be just American actors. It could mm-hmm. be you know it, actors in general. Who your favorite actors are. Right now, um, for boning or for watching? Um, <laughs> for me, I'm gonna go have to go watching. Probably for boning. Mm, for watching. Uh, watching. Yes. Okay, okay, for watching. For watching. So mm. let's do. Let's do. Well, that, that makes my list a lot shorter. <laughs> me right. too. Well, Kevin, who are if you like? There's because that's the thing. Movies have changed significantly over the last, uh, I don't know, f- at least five, ten years. Because ten years Tell ago... Tell us more about that, Christian. Do, don't you think, though, as far as stars go? Like, as far as, like, back in the day, like, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, didn't, want, no, didn't matter what movie they were coming out with, you go see it. Yeah. Because it's them. That, yeah. doesn't, that doesn't happen as Wild much Wild anymore. West. Right. Well, yeah, and it still made a lot of money, right? Totally. It, it doesn't happen anymore. Like, it's more about the, the director, the quality of the movie. Sometimes the star gets I you think in it's, there. I think it's more about the franchise now. Well, that, you know? That's true, too. Than the star, but... Uh, that's but, a great point. But Thank which you. actors now that you, do you see... You know, we mentioned Fassbender and her, yeah. this, you know, the steam started coming out of our ears. And, he's um, a Fassbender. Yeah. So which, which actors right now do you think... But that's not only because he's an attractive dude. The guy is... No, a phenomenal actor. Abs- no, b- believe me. When I want to bone them, it's not only because they're attractive. It's because their talent is so epic, it makes my weenus go hard. <laughs> That's what I'm missing. <laughs> the weenus? Talent. Oh. Damn it. Because right. also, 
a lot of these actors, you get boners for them, if I can speak very freely, because they choose films so carefully. Like, for instance, there's, some, there's, there's actresses like, I used to adore Rachel McAdams. I mm-hmm. loved her. And then she started making decisions like an effing a-hole and stopped, <laughs> stopped caring about her projects. Right. Like, Mean Girls, awesome. The Notebook, awesome. Right. I know both chick flicks. But well, then she I made a bunch of terrible female movies after well, that. Well, and are we talking about Home for the Holidays? Is that the one that she was in? No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no that, was, uh, that was a long time ago. No, no, was, you can't get your head out of the beaver. You love about, Jodie Foster. Morning no, Glory. No, 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 I'm not. Morning, morning Glory is a Yeah, totally Morning she took, she took a. It was terrible. She took a break um, as well. But you're right. She. Well, that's because of... Ryan Gosling dumped her. When Ryan Gosling leaves you, you take a break. Didn't she t- toss him? I don't think... don't ruin the end of the Notebook because I haven't uh, seen it yet. Really? I really. I, I just want to sit down and have like a good no, cry. They really I haven't had any, in real life. I haven't had any time to. Wa- I want to have like a free night one of these nights and just sit down and watch the Notebook but, and see what everybody's talking. Uh, about. But anyway, I'm going to spoon you through the whole thing and we're cool. going to love it. All we're right. Get well, hey, apparently, according to the internet, we're in love, sweetheart. That's true. That's a great. We haven't talked about that. Yeah, to, yeah we, that's right. We need Who's to talk about that. What's his name? I don't know. I told him I would talk about it. To this, there's a video out there. Whoever you are out there, it's brilliant. Yes, there's a video out there. If you guys who are watching the live stream right now, do a YouTube search for Mark Ellison. And Catherine Reitman in love. It's and brilliant. It's really funny. Um, and it was a guy from Germany who sent it to us. And Always the Germans. It's true. <laughs> uh, and you know, and he puts the wrong clip in. Goes nine and changes the thing over. But um, <laughs> it it actually came out really. Uh, it was really funny. It's really it's really yeah. well made. It is, it and is. it's so accurate because I've always had feelings for Mark, mm-hmm. and then I saw the video and it like concreted it. I was like, wait, I'm in fucking love with him. That's yeah, right. it really was like a born identity thing where I didn't realize the depth of my emotion until it was brought out, and then I saw it. And then, and then you she, know, earlier today we kind of had our first lovers quarrel. I so know. well, we're always we're always fucking up fighting sex. Mark and I. <laughs> I it's showed up. Be good. It was raining. It was the, he opened the door, and before I knew it, we were in foreplay. That's you know? right. And then she left you for Jeremy Johns. Um, <laughs> now, uh, so you were saying, though, in regards to Rachel, Adam, Rachel, Rachel McAdams. Okay, so the, she's yep. an example of someone who's mm-hmm. highly talented, and I think a smart, smart person, but right. made some terrible choices. Maybe for money, maybe she's got a bad team around her. But there's some actors out there, like Ryan Gosling, not to stick with the cast of The Notebook here, mm-hmm. but who makes... <laughs> Awesome choice after yeah, awesome choice, except for Lars and the Real Girl. No. Oh, I no. like that. You You're, like that? I love that. Gotta go. Are, Gotta get go. out of here. Oh, You're my crazy. goodness. Get out of here. Are you kidding you me? You liked Lars and the Real Girl? Yes. That movie is great. Oh, you're out of your I mind. Really, oh, really, I really, really, I really, really like that movie. You you're both and, out um, of your mind. All right, who do you, just all you need to type on the side here once again. It's we're in a little delay, but when you guys see that on the streaming, please write agree with uh, Schmoes agree with Catherine. Right on I'm or curious. right to remain silent? It's up to you. I, I'm curious. Now, it, okay, it's not even so wrong. It's right. It's terrible. We no, really, it's not we terrible. really like the movie, but it, it also, it you also, guys liked it also you has. Guys, we have some He's fond feelings wolf. for it because it was one of the first reviews that we ever did too. Oh, it was Lars and the Real, the Real Girl? Girl? One of the first ones. But, oh, but I really like. I really like the movie. Okay, but again, you maybe didn't like it because you never had a relationship with an inflated doll like I have. It's true. That is true. I date them on a regular basis. I'm actually on an online website where you date. It's Sets you up with inflated dolls that may be compatible to you. All right, well, we keep we, we keep going off topic because she insults good this good movie. So you're but, not coming uh, over to, for, for my tea party. <laughs> you don't want to meet Alyssa. If it's all rubber girl, Alyssa. <laughs> oh, she's named Shows Christian. Those are kicking ass on the board. Uh, right turn and silent. Oh, oh, Catherine's getting some love. Schmoe's getting some love. Wow, it is back. Uh, Ooh, we're getting close. It's 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 neck and neck. Yeah. There's a lot of well, love and a lot of hate. Going back to the question, to the original question, um, if you know people that you really look forward to movies with, I'm still I'm always I'm always a big like uh, you know legacy guy to where I still I'll still get excited if like my favorite guys from when I was young are in movies. So like right. I get excited for like Tom Cruise or even like yeah, Harrison Ford or somebody Tom like Cruise that. On the same However, way. right now a do like Harrison Ford wait, same way really well, real yeah, quick because it's Harrison Ford. I do want to say I, I before Tom we Solo. got to Lars and Ruby, but I do agree a hundred percent with what you were saying though. There are certain actors though yeah. that make the right decisions. Yeah, that it comes you down trust to, them exactly. Like and I think Fassbender is one of those guys that's doing that too. Call him Fassbender or I leave. Uh, I, no, you hate you Lars and Ruby. I can't do it. I won't do it. Um, but yeah, but well, I'm, in, I'm in disbelief. But you know, and, an, and another example of someone who was doing it wrong was Natalie Portman. Right. Because Natalie Portman, again, you throw out five, six, seven movies in a year, and they're and they're not all great. People are going to yeah. get sick of you. Yeah. Gosling, Fassbender put out seven, eight movies, and you're like, more, more, more. All good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All good. Right. My guy right now is uh, is uh, is Clooney. I mean, every Still, yeah, everything solid. the guy yeah. does. He, it, Leatherheads, Leatherheads was pretty awful. Leatherheads was awful. It was pretty tough watching yeah. him mean mug the camera for that long. But um, and just just the way he, I, I think he really cares about making movies. I yeah. think he cares about doing it the right I way. Agree. So I'm like that with Nick Cage. Like he just can't make a bad movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
Like he's just oh, solid. He reads. But you know what? Every lot. time a Nick Cage movie comes out, you're like, I may have to see this. It's it, for the completely opposite so wrong, reason right. than so you want to see. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, get it. I know. Uh, so I mean, for me, I, Joseph Gordon-Levitt for me is is the guy that I, I like because mm-hmm. fifty fifty. To me, he, yeah, I mean, but fifty fifty, it feels like he broke the seal into movie stardom. Prior to that, I think he did a lot of movies where it's like he had some good ones, but he was just trying to get work. Yeah, I, but you didn't like uh, um, Five Hundred Days. Uh, was it Five Hundred totally Days of honest, Summer? Summer. I was medium on it. Wow. I really okay. wanted. You to You know love what? It. I really liked Five Hundred Days of Summer. When I saw it in the theater, in, in the theater. I watched it the other night on cable. I tried to watch a little bit of it. Couldn't get through. Really? You know who directed it? Right? Couldn't get through. Who? Mark Webb. Oh, really? Yeah. The guy from Spider Man. Let me ask you guys this because this is kind <laughs> of. Um, what um, is there? Is there somebody like that in the comedy world, though? Because it's it's hard for me to well, think of like, like in the '90s, you had Jim Carrey, and you right. could rely on him. Right. Or even if the Fairly Brothers did a comedy movie, comedy is so hit or miss now. I don't know who Especially to trust anymore. Especially if you go to film festivals, like I just went to the Toronto, not just went the Toronto Film Festival in September, mm-hmm. and a lot of the a lot of comedians just desperately want to be in movies. They yeah. Yeah. they'll do anything. They'll mm-hmm. do indie movies. They think it's cool. They think it's hip. Yeah. And so you go to all these films at the film festival, and like. Like Seth Rogen, Sarah Silverman, people I really dig, just mm-hmm. in shit bombs, just terrible right. films. But you yeah. know, but you know who did that? Right? Like, and and sometimes you're gonna get, like you said, there are comedians that are just like, I want to show that I, my real serious side it can right. come out. And you know who did well, that well? And I'm no, but he he he's hit or miss with his serious movies too. But someone who did it well, and I'm not just saying it because someone is connected in some way, was Patton Oswalt. Uh, was, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Pat Oswalt yeah. brilliant, was but so he was good. in great hands. I'm not just saying that because I'm connected to him genetically. Right. He uh, was he, really well directed. Yes, he was, movie. but he was also, and even though I didn't love the movie, um a big fan. Yeah. Uh he, oh, yeah. he was great in that too. About a Giants I, fan that takes it too seriously. What's that like? Uh I know it's <laughs> true. It must be very hard to live with. <laughs> Television's broken. Um <laughs> but yeah, so uh you know, it is it's but as far as comedic like out there it, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that's my point is that it's tough is that we're going back to like looking more forward to a franchise and somebody opening a movie yeah. that's what it is the comedy has to look good but like you know Bridesmaids I didn't really care about anybody in the cast but then you go see the movie and you hope it's good and right. it's great then you have the hangover right. a built in franchise right. and it's, it's just it's, awful it's about, it, it right. really is about script it's about um, director it's about produce it's, uh, you know with comedy producing is really it's a combo yeah, yeah, yeah it is a lot and of people involved like it's not like, like we're past like the Jim Carrey days yeah but, but, but right. everybody wants to show on Jim Carrey Look at how hard that is now. Where's the next comic superstar that can do that? Look at how, like, it, look back yeah. in his work in the '90s, and that's like that's Hall of Fame first ballot. Of course, well, and, of and course. it aged on him terribly. You know, people ended up resenting him for the right. same rubber face that made him famous. Yeah, and the thing is too, like, and I wish he and he he was in that. He remember he had that stretch. He had Jim Carrey. We're talking about had like a three or four year stretch where the movies he were getting was just about to get a nomination for an Oscar. Yeah, 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 just, yeah, 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 that, yeah. Those days are gone. Yeah, although Eternal Sunshine. No, I don't think so. Really? I don't think those days are gone. He was great, and I love you, Philip. I think he can pull off a serious movie. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Oh my God! You, you didn't like him in that movie. You, left and right you didn't like him in that movie. Maybe it's because we're in did, love. But did you like him in it, not the movie itself? Did you think he? God, was good? no! I can't look at his face. I can't look at his face. Do that shit anymore. Face. He's too old for that. Too close on his face. All Come right. on. Did you have coffee this morning? A <laughs> little bit. I've been up since six. I need some too. So well, I got a lot of good news recently, and I don't sleep anymore. I know, Christian. I, know. I got Catherine pregnant, and it's oh my just one God. of those that, yeah bombshell. She put his weenus right in me. You guys are going bananas here on. Let me tell you something. Here's the sex. The first time we slept together. She said Michael Fassbender's name seven times, and I just it's kept going. It's the only way I come. It I is kept, the only way I come. I wow, we are getting horse, raw horse, this, horse, this horse. early in the morning. Um, the war horse. War horse, war horse, war horse. That's how Mark and I screw. This is, this is oh, what my God. This is what we we just opened a whole new element to this right. podcast. So we are about to uh, wind down on our first episode. Of, I don't know if there's any winding down going on at all. This is So here's what we're going to do. I, we are live streaming today. Um, <laughs> but before, it's not our first episode. It's our 40th episode. Right. Well, I mean, first episode of the day. It feels like the first time, as far as once said. Yes. Now, uh, a couple things. First of all, again, if you are watching the live stream and you're we new to the podcast, sorry. yes, we um, apologize. Go to iTunes, go to the Schmoes No Podcast, and make sure that you write a review to this and comment on it. It really it, it helps us helps yeah, us please out. Tell these guys that they're crazy for liking Lars and the Real Girl. <laughs> yeah, and then so that now here's what we're gonna do. We are going to open up a section. Now we have the live stream. We're, we're going to have the question section. So Ooh. shoot out some questions for either the schmoes, for Ms. Reitman. Uh, anything we'll probably about movies, all get around to answering want, them. And I will get, and <laughs> we're just going to pick a couple. I know that there's a, you know, you guys are going to fire it off on the board here, and I will do my best to read them. And once they load, we will answer. 
Christian's uh, a very fast reader, as all of his Star Wars books have implied. That's right. Okay. So let's see. Once, once we reboot this thing, we're going to start answering. You know, I was shocked. Like, the first time I went over to Christian's place, we were really, like, you know, hanging out and being friends. Like, I saw how many Star Wars books he had on the shelf. And, like, I'm like, how do you... You, you date? And he's like, yeah, he... he you know, he's, he's known women in the past. And he, he maybe has the best Ooh. Star Wars with you. You oh. maybe have the best Star Wars book ratio to, like, girls you've been on dates with that I've ever seen in my life. It's incredible. Thank you. I appreciate he's, that. He's tall and he's attractive. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So now we have the uh, favorite. Someone asked who's this. Uh, Pat Douglas asked. I think one time he, he said no to a date so he could stay home and read a Star Wars right. book. I'm pretty sounds, sure that happened. Accurate. It was a television show. <laughs> uh, all right. So favorite movie of 2012 so far? It's a great question. By Pat great question. Uh, we, we talked about it earlier. Joyful Noise. Next question. You're full of it. You're full of it. Um, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Uh, you have not seen Chronicle yet, have you? I have not seen Chronicle. I heard it's great. It is really good. I think actually that is a superhero film that you might, because you do like I also, I dig characters. the found footage stuff. I think, I think it's fun. I think you really dig it because it's more real than it's like the cartoony stuff. So yeah. I think that you would dig that movie. I but like that. I know that I gave it a higher, a lower rating than Chronicle, but I'm going to say The Grey is my favorite movie of Jan- of uh, Ugh, 2012 so, so far. It's so good, Christian, and it's just so well directed. Yeah. I know you and I are both obsessed with that one scene. I watched it again with my family. Which one? The uh, plane crash? Plane crash is brilliant, right. but the uh, you we we saw it separately. Yeah. We see so many movies t- together now that I sometimes we leave movies separately, and I'm like, I wonder if the schmo is like that scene. Right, right. But there's that one scene where, and this is not a spoiler. Don't I wonder worry. what Mark and Christian are doing right. But now. that one guy sits down, stops walking. I love that snow. scene. Oh, right, I love right, right, that right, right. scene. And you hear the yeah. footsteps in the snow. It's, they're directed so well. I think that's probably one of the best two minutes yes. on Abs- cinema in absolutely. a long time. That's the, the first thing when Chris and I were talking about when we left the theater. I was like, that scene. Goose, man. Goosebump and Because yeah, Because, because, you, because it, you, you would feel a lot of pressure to kind of rush that scene and to not let it play out naturally. Uh, right. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. Another right. movie that just yeah. kicked some private ass is A Separation, which I break Didn't down in BID 51. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Film nominated for Oscar for the Jolie original one, screenplay. It? No, that's in the land of blood and honey. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, okay. Which was really good, but really tough. Okay. But this one, a separation, is not tough. It's really sophisticated mm-hmm. and beautiful. You have to read subtitles involved. Look at him, not me. Yeah, you know, you're fantastic with reading. Yeah. Um, yeah, if it's about but Star it's, Wars. you guys, it's amazing, especially right now with all the terrible films coming out in February. Go see a separation, yeah. rent it, find it. Okay. It's worth it. All yeah. right, uh, let's I'll, see. What, I'll probably go. Oh, thanks for asking me. Oh, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably go with. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, you know what? I don't have a good answer. It's, really? it's probably either The Grey or Chronicle. Yeah, I felt that. But I nothing really. That. Yeah, sure. I felt yeah, that. Well, you that's did. what happens. 2012, I mean, it just started. There's no, you know. Yeah. I want to get your guys, I want to get your guys' take on the Navy SEAL movie. That's a good question. Uh, guess what I saw last night? I saw Warrior, finally. And what did you think? It was brilliant. Oh, uh, we were going to talk about, you know what? It hold so oh, cool. hold off on. His hold, eyes just went big. It's one of my favorite movies of last year. It was year. fantastic. Now, hold off on that because Ari Shafir, if he comes by, we're going to talk about Warrior and some martial arts stuff. That's Excellent. next week. Yeah. But Garberg asked, how did the Schmoes meet Catherine? It was never, a dark alleyway, my friends. We've actually never yeah. talked about it. We talked about how you and I met. I don't think we've ever talked about how we met. That's right. We haven't on the podcast. So that's, a good, that's a good one. Um, well, the funny thing is I like to keep I've up. I've been driving by Catherine's house for a few <laughs> weeks. Mark had his pants off, and I said, what are you doing? And he pointed, and I went over and talked to and Catherine. And he got it. Um, so I, um, the, I like to keep up on the YouTube movie reviewing community, seeing mm-hmm. what's going on. I was watching, and I saw this. this Character talking about movies and higher production quality than ours. You got and real I, jealous of those fancy and I, cameras. And I, went, I went, "What is this?" I'm like, "Oh, let me let me check it out." And I started laughing, and I'm like, "Wow, this is actually pretty good." And we had just started our podcast, and I sent, I did the uh, Facebook request for, I think it was from the Schmoes or from, I don't remember which one it was, and I sent Catherine a message, and I said, "Love what you're doing. Love to have you on the podcast." Blah, blah, blah. and she responded back, and we just and it just kind of fell by the wayside. Yeah, never really talked again. Then Mark and I got cast in this pilot. That we a television show and Catherine all got cast and we talked and we hit it off and then I think next week she became a co-host on the podcast. By the way, that pilot, which uh, I'm sure we're allowed to talk about, yeah, it's dead. It's dead. Um, but it was one of the, it was a, a Harvey Levin joint where we had to discuss what was going on in pop culture, right. and we were surrounded by idiots. And it was basically <laughs> a huge conference table filled with people talking pop news, and the, basically the three of us were the dominating. It was just the three of us being like, I know, right? I know this guy gets it. It was just all of us joke, talking. Joke, 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 joke. Yeah, we kind of took over that that ship, it was and fun. it became like our own pirate ship. And that's fun. probably why the show didn't go. But <laughs> but we all felt we ended up going for coffee afterwards and connected. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, and then you came into the podcast. Yeah. 
And it worked. We actually, it was funny too because I said to Mark, I was because we sat down, we had coffee, and I was like, I feel like she would be a good co-host. We had good chemistry. We talked for movies for like an hour. And, and then we saw Footloose together. Right. And then we saw Footloose together. Footloose and was really when we knew we had something special yeah. because right. we were dancing yep, yep. in the aisles after that. And yep. the rest is history. Um, okay. So someone wants you to show them your dead tooth. Ah, Which, right, of course, right, right. is a reference from uh, uh, it's, it's Always, always Sunny. Sunny. My mm. teeth are not dead. No. Not um, as it turns out. People that we get a lot on our channel. But you like, get a lot of it. I know you get it. I know you get it. But we got <laughs> Between we, that and How I Met Your Mother, yeah, Henrietta, there's, there's a lot of that. Um, okay, someone asks us, uh, you know what? I'm going to read this comment. I'm not going to tell you who it's from, but I am going to read it. What do you guys think of the Battleship Super Bowl spot? I thought the Battleship Super Bowl spot was really cool. I, really? I know the movie's not going to be... I'm pretty sure the movie's not going to be good, and it's going to feel too transformers and nobody hated Transformers 3 more than me. But the, just the trailer, going on the trailer, I think it looks cool. I want to see Liam Neeson command a battleship and shoot rockets. Ooh, Rihanna doesn't scare the hell out of you? No. That's right. Okay, now I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Peter Berg directed it, though. I like Peter Berg as a director. No, He's Rihanna a, doesn't scare the hell out of you. They put her in it fine. It just sounds like Transformers. I don't see any plot. All no. I saw was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all I saw was robot. Yeah, yeah. It, it just it just looks like goffish. Now, who asked that? Was that Stockman? Who asked that? Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to say who who asked it. Um, okay. Next question. All right. So uh, B. This is a good question. 14. Curious George Monkey asks, "What is the worst movie of 2012 so far?" Oh wow. I mean, it's easy for me. I mean, I, we go. were joking. I got to go. Joyful noise. I wanted to shoot myself in the head twice. Um, that's the that's the beauty of BID is I don't watch a lot of movies that look man. terrible. Um, Joyful Noise was the hardest one to sit through. And, and But I got to tell you, man, the choir scenes were so good in that movie, but everything else is just like a labor of just sitting there and just, right. oh, you, so bad. What about Haywire? I know I loved Haywire. I loved Haywire. I liked Haywire. Oh, you liked Haywire, Haywire may actually be my favorite one of 2012. Okay, I, really, yeah. okay. I wasn't I loved sold it. on Haywire. It's, I liked it a lot. Uh, I did not like Safe House, but it wasn't like the mm, worst right, movie right, that right. came out. Um, um, is there anything else that was pretty terrible? What was terrible? Was there, there has been some bad stuff, and you know we, we not that nothing that too bad. Yeah, yeah. let's see. Okay, so um, I can ask this, Catherine. This is one for you. Did you guys see the Devil Inside? Oh, the Devil Inside I heard was pretty no, bad how too. Was it? Was it bad? It was. It wasn't good. It wasn't as bad as Joyful Noise. I like horror movies a lot more than church choir movies. Right. But uh, That's it, 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 it wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, all right, Catherine. This is a this is a <coughs> question for you, one of your, your your TV days from D Y L Murray. Who was the coolest person to hang out with on the set of How I Met Your Mother? On How I Met Your Mother, um, the whole cast was absolutely badass. I think I identified the most with uh, Colby Smothers and her husband. She's not hard to look at. She's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And her husband uh, was in Sunday Company at the Groundlings with me. He's now, of course, uh, on Saturday Night Live. Oh, cool. And um, who's, her was, who's her husband? Uh, Taryn Killam. That guy is funny, man. He's really funny. Holy crap, that guy's good. And uh, He's married to Robin on How I Met Your Mother. Yes. I'm out of here. I'll say yes. What's everyone threatening to leave? <laughs> All right. Um, That's what happens when you have it at your house. We take it very seriously. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, last, we're going to do two more questions here, and then we will um, then we'll bail. Uh, and then we're going to do our we're Oscars. We're going to bail. We'll, 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 we'll reconvene. excuse we'll ourselves. Reconvene. The live stream will continue. Um, we will get some, uh, some coffee for Catherine and myself, and then we'll start talking about Oscars. But this episode of the podcast will be dead. All right. Um, I don't like you treating our podcast like that. Okay, it's giving you such an hour of joy, then you just kill it. All right, here you go. Uh, let's see. God, are those all questions Is just all, coming in? The Woman in Black was another really good movie, 2012. Oh, that might be one. my favorite yeah, one, too. One now too. all these ones are just popping up, but right. uh, yeah. That's how it works. All right, last, the, this one I know, uh, Catherine, I'm still going to give, you know, I can answer for Catherine right now, but out of these movies, The Dark Knight Rises, The Avengers, or The Hunger Games? From Paul Gull 516. Who are you uh, most... Which one are you most excited to see? Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Yeah. I mean, are, you Hunger Ga are you Hunger Star Games over Batman? Uh, I got Dark Knight by, by, by a yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, you Dark do. Knight by a head. Yeah. Um, but you're I, a real American. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with The Dark Knight Rises, then The Avengers, then Hunger Games. Okay. Um, and that, and but again, not much of a reader. So <laughs> Not a reader. All right. Uh, now, that's, uh, that, this is our final question, and then we are out. How do you guys feel about the commercial... Oh, sorry. How do you guys feel about the Commando remake with the, with the Sam guy? I, and I'm assuming that's Sam Worthington. Really? I don't, I guess. I, I didn't. You know, I I, I didn't I grow know up watching true. Commando like Christian did. So remake it. I don't care. It's not like you're remaking. You know, Terminator. Right. It's go ahead, have at it. 
I say All take right. that money and as make a cool movie. As long as Alyssa Milano is still in it. <laughs> um, but that's it. That has been that's been the podcast. I had a lot of fun. Um, a lot of arguing. A lot of bonding. A yeah. lot of um, We're, reminiscing. Usually we end these things when everybody's had. Let's just walk this podcast out to the woods and shoot it. Right in the head. <laughs> it was, no, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I was like, it, it was, was fun. Yeah, it was nice talking to everybody um, and and catching up with old friends. Welcome yeah. back. Catherine. And next yes, week we're really, going to be talking really Oscars. Really good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Next next week or yeah next week we'll be talking about the Oscars. We're going to do. We'll talk about a couple of films that are nominated, some potential snubs, and th- that will be our Oscar special that we'll be doing, and we'll also release it on our channel. You can also find this episode on our Schmozno channel if you want to uh, watch it and check it out. And also make sure if you don't, if you're not subscribed to Catherine, oh, do it. YouTube.com you. backslash Catherine Reitman. It's the right thing to do. All right, that's it. Beautiful and again, singing voice, Christian. I appreciate that. So check us out on iTunes if you haven't done that already and thanks guys and we shall talk to you soon